In the yellowed photograph, a tanned man with a high forehead and thick lips wore a white shirt and trousers and a twin lens camera around his neck. I was intrigued. The man was my paternal grandfather, Shen Huan Sheng, the only other photographer and journalist in the family, as I later found out. Relatives had rarely spoken about him since his death in 1949. It wasn't until 2011 that I travelled back to our village and back in time to start piecing his story together. All I had heard vaguely was that he had died in China, where there was a monument to him. What had he done to have that, I wondered. How, in this family so staunchly apolitical, did I have a grandfather who was a communist martyr? The topic, though, was taboo in our family. No one wanted to reopen this old chapter of history. Over 60 years had passed. These steps at the jetty in Songko town, East Guangdong, are the ones my paternal great-grandfather and many hakas from the impoverished mountains regions nearby walked down to get onto small boats to set sail for Shantou at the turn of the 20th century. From Shantou, they boarded larger ocean-going ships headed for Southeast Asia, then known as Nanyang, or the Southern Seas. A generation later, in early 1949, his son, my grandfather Shen Huancheng, walked up those very same steps back to his ancestral village. He had sailed back after being deported by the British in Malaya during the Malayan emergency for suspected leftist activities. This three metre high obelisk at the entrance to my ancestral village of Gaosheng bears the words Shen Huangsheng Lie Shi Ji Nian Bei, the monument of martyr Shen Huangsheng. It is here that my paternal grandfather's ashes are buried. The monument was built in 1953, four years after Grandad was executed in July 1949 by the rival Kuomintang army as they retreated towards Taiwan. His death came just two months shy of the communist victory across China. His death was the pivot on which the family's fate turned. It's spring, and a neighbour in our ancestral village is working on her pomelo trees. This remote mountainous area of East Guangdong is exclusively inhabited by the Hakka, who are said to have originated from the central plains of China and moved south in repeated waves, coming to be known as the guest people, or Kezia. They were known for their hardiness and often settled in the most inhospitable places. This courtyard house my great-granddad Shen Shui-xiang built in our ancestral village of Gaosheng dates back some 100 years. It is still occupied by some of our relatives. After I first visited the village and house in January 2011, I persuaded my father and his four siblings to return to pay respects to their father. Shen Qisheng, my granddad's cousin, sits in his room in the house my great-grandfather built, seemingly trapped in an old life. Each time I have returned to the village to visit, Shen has given a letter detailing my grandfather's great sacrifice for the Communist Party in China. Some of the letters end with a plea for the party to give him an allowance as the relative of a martyr. 
Shen is rumored to have worked with the rival Kuomintang, which eventually killed my granddad during the Chinese Civil War in the late 1940s. The one thing my relatives in China handed me when I first visited our village house in January 2011 was this old photograph. It is of my grandfather Shen Huansheng and appears to be his prison photo from British Malaya. Relatives say he brought it back with him when he returned in 1949 after being deported from Malaya where he had been imprisoned by the British. It might very well have been the very last photograph of him. Wokanana 我想當時他一定是心裡面很煩悶啊,大概是也有點有點想要自殺的念頭了,因為他很很擔心我父親啊,他就這樣講。My oldest uncle, Sim Chun Hin, still chokes up each time he recalls the day my grandfather was arrested. How British special branch officers and policemen with guns drawn came to the family provision shop in Salama, Perak, that afternoon in mid-1948 and took Grandad away in handcuffs. It was the early days of the emergency and he was said to be suspected of running a shop supplying and raising money for the communist insurgency. That was the last time my uncle and my father, Sim Tun Hin, ever saw their father. I remember very 動都不敢動了,也不敢說出來啊,或者走前期啊也不敢啊。就是這樣看,包括當時的頭髮大概也沒有剪完啊。就是看到他這樣被人家帶走了。記得很清楚。Interestingly, the myth that surrounds Grandad in our ancestral village was that he was the right-hand man or second in command to the Malayan Communist Party chief, Chin Ping. That much is certainly not true. But what was Grandad's role in the broad movement of the Malayan left? Most of my Singapore and Malaysia-based family members adamantly deny that Grandad was even a member of the Communist Party in Malaya. In 1946, Grandad had been the chief editor of the Ipo Daily newspaper, Ipa Rubao, and penned anti-colonial editorials under the pseudonym Shen Yi. Before and after his short-lived run at the newspaper, which closed down, he had been a dean and school principal of a series of Chinese schools in Penang, Kedah and Perak. Grandad had been arrested by the British in Salama, Perak in Malaya in mid-1948, at the start of the Malayan emergency. He was among scores of mostly Chinese individuals detained on suspicion of leftist political activities or providing help to the Malayan Communist Party. Imprisoned in Taiping and Perak, Grandad was offered voluntary repatriation to China, like over 30,000 Malayans were during the emergency years. He returned there in early 1949, and soon after, went into the hills to join the Chinese Communist guerrilla army, which was engaged in a brutal civil war with the KMT. 
，这个是那个很多柚子的。哦。我每次跟他住他家。Granddad had left grandma and their five children behind in Malaya. They did not know about his death for another two years or so. Thereafter, Grandma banned the children from ever talking about their father again, and severed ties with our relatives in China. We have already said that we have a little bit of the feeling of forgetting him. If you don't remind him, you don't remind him, you don't remind him, we have just forgotten him. Although we have been to the Qingming Jie, 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 但是我们通常比较隆重的，都是拜呃你的祖母跟你的曾祖母了嘛。I never heard our family discuss Granddad's political activities, and they perhaps never knew about his participation in the Chinese Civil War until I connected the dots in 2011 after my first visit to our village. For over 60 years, no one amongst the overseas family members had come to visit our village or to see Grandad and his grave. My oldest uncle often speaks about the tragedy of losing his father, the tragedy to the family. Over several years of working to unearth more and more of Grandad's story, I've come to see that he was an archetypal Malayan leftist intellectual who dreamt of a post-colonial future and did his part in that fight. Many other families face similar tragedies and trauma on either side of the political divide. It is that story I am now seeking to tell. On one of the gravestones of a British planter killed by a Malayan communist guerrilla in 1950, it is inscribed, One day we'll understand. Will we? <laughs> 